Now, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is leading to a shortage of, of some foods, uh, wheat being the most obvious one, and there is a, a long-standing now hike in the price of food in our supermarket shelves. A concern over the UK's food self-sufficiency. This is something uh, we've been banging on about on this news channel for months uh, now. The UK's food self-sufficiency. Bear in mind, we only grow, produce about half of the food that we consume in this country. And if the pandemic taught us anything, did it not teach us something about the fragility of supply Chains. Well, the government will this week introduce a bill that will allow farms to grow more crops which have been edited to be more resistant to disease or need less water or fertiliser. Uh, the agricultural journalist Bruce Jobson joins us now to ponder on this one. Uh, Bruce, welcome to you. Uh, gene editing, um, for some people, like the Prince of Wales, for instance, it will conjure up uh, you know, Frankenstein images of uh, people tampering with nature and we don't know where it ends. But actually, the idea of splicing together genes has been done for centuries in plant life. Well, absolutely correct. Thanks for the invitation, Colin. Um, yeah, it's been done naturally. Um, you, I know you were out in Afghanistan, for example, and 1,100 years ago, uh, there was a thing which was called a carrot, and it was white. And uh, there was a gene mutation that happened, and it turned to yellow. And from the yellow in about 1,700, the Dutch, which where, where we associate carrots with, uh, developed that further to orange. Now, if somebody did that today in a laboratory, say at Reading University, I'm sure there'd be outrage. But this is nothing new. But in your lead in there, you, you said it so correctly. You know, um, we need to get more uh, disease resistant plants. We need to get them to be able to survive better within drought situations. People are forgetting we've had a lot happening in the past two years. But what has really happened in, in, in the form of agricultural farming is that we will still need to feed roughly 9 billion people by 2050. We've been focusing on other things, and this is a massive thing when already there's 1 billion people undernourished on the planet. And, and this is going to have a huge effect, and we need to use every available tool to do it now, just to point out, there's about On the tools available to us. I mean, does that mean that it's a, it's it's folly for for the British government to be encouraging farmers and paying farmers uh, to say, okay, we're going to plant some trees, uh, or sometimes saying to a big airline that you can offset your carbon, we'll we'll plant the trees for you, you can worry about the environment a little less, but that means that field which used to produce food is now growing trees. Colin, I'm delighted you've said that. I had articles that were refused to be published because I raised this very point. I got told this doesn't fit the agenda. Oh, no, we can't print that, Bruce. No, absolutely not. Greta wouldn't approve of that. No, the problem is, I'll go back and I'll just point out that uh, this was introduced, zero carbon was introduced through Theresa May and the dying days of her administration. And actually, Mr. Hammond, who I was not a big fan of, uh, he, he actually said, warned, this is going to cost a trillion pound, 44% of GDP. So this went on. And what it will require is that 20% of productive cropland in the UK will be taken out for tree planting. Now, it's absolutely insane when the whole of the UK and the whole of the world is desperate for food. 20% of our... Now, you mentioned, and I've mentioned on this channel several times, we're down to 50 55% self-sufficiency. If you take another 20% out and start planting yeah. little twiglets, you're not going to get, you know, uh, uh, food security. I've yeah. been writing about this in 2011. Well, uh, Bruce, I think we're out of time, but you, you, we'll invite you on to keep on talking about it because it's, it's about as vital an issue as it's possible to imagine. Bruce Jobson, uh, there. Michael Portillo has been our guest throughout the course of uh, the last afternoon. My, my gaze was drawn to your trousers when he talked about the carrot being yellow, <laughs> yeah. much as orange as your trousers. Did they ever, were they ever white? Uh, oh, of course they were there, but <laughs> back in the 17th century. Um, uh, I really enjoy being on this channel, by the way, but... Uh, I've been struck by the way that the government is seizing opportunities. I mentioned earlier how we're now talking about developing oil and gas fields, which a few months ago was verboten. But in the situation of the, of the shortage of energy, we're looking at that. And we've been talking about gene editing crops for years, and now we're going to get them. The camera operator was fe feverishly trying to get a reframe for a picture of your trousers. We couldn't quite make it out. Oh, no, hang on. Uh, there. Uh, there they are. are. <laughs> Not something you see every day, is it? <laughs>